this video. Thank you so much for being here. Today, we're going to address a question posed by Amina Zemaikina. What are the effects of over-fertilizing our orchids? And keeping us company today, in between footage that I do have when I show examples and footage that I don't have, is Talumnia Red Devil, Dendrobium Lutein Blanc, and Lelia Harpophila. So let's get into this. I'm going to expand and elaborate a little bit on Amina's question. And I'm going to talk about not only the effects, but also how to avoid over-fertilization and the signs to look out for if you are over-fertilizing, because there will be signs on the media and the orchid itself. And if by that time you are still interested, we will also talk about how to pace ourselves with fertilizer to maybe avoid the effects altogether. And I'm going to start with the most dangerous of them all, which requires a little bit of explanation. The roots of all our plants naturally contain levels of mineral ions called root salts, which help create a stable, natural flow of water and nutrients into the plant's vascular system. If the amount of fertilizer salts added to the media is more than what the plant needs and can use, the plant will be affected. And as the salts accumulate in the pot, they can start to disrupt the flow of water and vital nutrients entering into the root. And subsequently, if the salts reach the point of excess, these naturally occurring root salts can in fact begin to draw water out of the plant and back into the media so even though a root looks plump and functional and you see it's nice and green on the inside if you were to cut into it excess salts from the fertilizers clash with the naturally existing root salts and the orchid cannot even absorb the water slowly desiccating with symptoms of dehydration having said all that that is the first effect of over-fertilization and possibly the most dangerous because we see plump roots, but an orchid that is dehydrating. So we think it is a thirsty orchid. We give it more water, which will result in root rot. And then we conclude that we overwatered when in actual fact we had over-fertilized. Let's move on to the signs that are easily recognized and will hopefully stop us in our tracks of too much love so that the previous effect never kicks into place. White residue on the surface of the media. This goes for organic and inorganic media. If you were to try and scrape it off with your fingernail, it comes off in like a powder form. It's, very, it's like a powder sugar can see how that is dissipating. That is one clear sign of over-fertilization. Mainly in my case, I have my lecker beads that are on the surface and the salts go into the pores and encrust themselves in the pores. Very, very obvious sign of over-fertilization. But this is not just over-fertilization and I will get to that, but it is an indicator that there is something we need to be aware of and we have to counteract it. So we'll get to this being the sign of over-fertilization, but not only. But these are the salts that will have wicked up to the surface of the pot. And once the media dries out, will be clearly visible. The effect of these salts can cause root tip dieback. If we are lucky, the root will have been long enough to branch elsewhere and continue growing. But if the root is just newly emerged, that root will be lost because the root tip will desiccate. That will be the end of that root. Sometimes, if left unchecked, over-fertilizing will also cause the excess salts to wick up the base of the orchid along the rhizome, causing any new eyes or the potential of new growths to also burn and become unviable, which will set the orchid back a year if the orchid were not to have any other growing points. Another effect of over-fertilizing and a sign that only becomes clear when we eliminate the possibility of sun damage, low humidity or cold exposure is leaf tip dieback. This mainly happens with orchids that are super slow growers like slipper orchids and in my case as an example Angracum didieri and Demophorcus lowii. Knowing the speed, <laughs> which in itself is an oxymoron when it comes to orchids, 
but knowing the speed at which your orchid grows will help to give you a heads up that it does not need a lot of fertilizer. Slower metabolism equals slow nutrient uptake and too much fertilizer will destroy the cells. Now, maybe you will have already seen signs of brown streaks and patches on your velamen, but that is not always a clear indicator of too much fertilizer. It can be, but it's not necessarily the case. More often than not, in this case, your fertilizer levels may be spot on for the orchid in the pot, but what is left on the surface evaporates too fast because of ambient airflow or even sunshine. So that is where excess salts will remain and give the appearance that too much fertilizer was used, but in actual fact, it's just faster evaporation than absorption. And that is, again, why this could be excess fertilizer, but also in this case, this leca was on the surface of my pots, which I removed. And it is possible that it was only a quick evaporation that created these salt deposits. It's still a warning. We still have to be really aware of what happens at the surface, again, because of our roots. But here's the thing, know that even if you do not water your orchid from the top of the media by pouring it through the pot and you choose to soak the pot instead, that this velamen burn can still happen because the media wicks the water to the surface where it will naturally evaporate. The same applies to orchids on a mount. Exposed roots at the top of the mount won't be in contact with water and moisture as long as those roots at the bottom of the mount. So salts can build up over time at the top because the water will drip down the mount and the top evaporates faster than the bottom. Overfertilizing can also result in unstable and weak growths, but that has to happen in combination of not giving the right amount of light. You will only recognize the effects of overfertilization in your growth without the correct amount of light to counteract that. When you see growths that have stretched or are growing longer than normal and you think, yay, this is going to be a big, nice growth, but what it's actually doing is really searching hard with the extra nutrients it has in it, leaning and growing towards any kind of light they can find, but those will be very weak structures and they are very, very prone to pests and rot. So now let's see if there's any way that we can avoid any of these things happening in the first place. But I'm going to put it out there. I don't want to disappoint. I'm just being realistic. The answer is no to everything I've mentioned with the exception of the first point about root salts clashing with our fertilizer salts. All other effects of fertilization will show up in your collection at some point or other, even if you're not over fertilizing. That is because as your orchids age, roots will have one form of burn or another, even out in nature. And I can vouch for the fact that orchid roots looked eerily calloused growing in their natural habitat, but they were still viable and functioning. It's just that they were very, very old. So as much as we want to avoid any brown streaks or any kind of blemishes on our velamen, even if our root tips have all gone into the pot, certain areas of the velamen will be exposed to the air. Over a period of time, it will happen that that velamen will get some blemishes. Maybe it will start to look calloused, but whatever is going on in the pot is absolutely fine and is not an indicator of over fertilization. It's just that the ambient air evaporates faster and the wicking potential of the roots absorbing the nutrients and the moisture in the pot. When it comes to the surface, evaporation will happen. So if you're still with me, thank you very much. Now let's talk about how we can pace ourselves with too much fertilizer or too much love, as I like to call it. The obvious answer is use less fertilizer, but less of how much. We all have different conditions. So where do we start? Best answer I can give here is on an individual orchid basis. The immediate thing I do is try to remove the surface media if possible and replace with fresh media. That solves the immediate problem. Long term though, I reduced my fertilizer by half of the parts per million I was using up until that point. And then it is a waiting game to see if my fresh media on the surface gets more salt accumulation in a time frame of approximately two months. That's how long it can take. Because having reduced the fertilizer and sticking to a regular flushing routine, 
there should be no more accumulation at the surface. Patience with orchids is key here because any change that we do to our fertilizer regime will take at least three to four months, if not a whole season, to assess if the problem was solved. But one thing I can guarantee is that when it comes to orchids, and if you are in doubt, I guarantee you that less is always more. Remind yourself that we are hobby growers and ensure that you have a balanced fertilizer. No matter what the percentage, the different ingredients have, most fertilizers will have the nutrients as explained in the video where the question comes from. And if you start with 100 parts per million and pH according to your media, the orchids will absorb that without any issues. Then the next year, up the ante and try 200 parts per million and see what happens. But no matter what media you grow in, don't forget to flush your pots and mounts on a regular basis. And know that the layman blemishes are normal and nothing to do with over fertilizing. Remind yourself that the roots in the media with more moisture are taking in what they are getting and it is as the velamen wicks up the nutrients and then it reaches and is exposed to the ambient air, evaporation will be faster and then there could be some brown blemishes. To reduce fertilizer based on what you see on the surface of the velamen that is above the pot would be a mistake if what you see in the pot is just fine. Be aware as well that the size of the roots also determine how delicate and fragile they are because there isn't such a big cushion of the layman surrounding the roots. Thick, chunky roots are a lot more forgiving than fine, skinny roots like telumnias or oncidiums. And while we want to grow our orchids to the best of our ability and keep increasing the growth year on year on year, know that there is a maximum size a growth can develop. The health of the roots is so, so important and over fertilizing them, burning root tips, causing immediate root loss, or as in my case, my mistake I made with the telumnias two years ago, almost killed my orchid simply because of over fertilizing and the roots literally died. If you are uncertain, as I mentioned before, start out with 100 parts per million, but pH according to your media so that the fertilizer elements are made available to the roots and can be absorbed. pH out of range, the minerals cannot be absorbed and for that reason will also accumulate around your roots and on the surface of the pot. It still doesn't mean you've over fertilized, it just means you've pH wrong. I'm hoping that I have enough material and footage to show you examples. If I didn't, I'm hoping that what I was talking about still made sense. And Amina, I hope I answered the question and you now have a better indication of what to look for and what to do and how to hopefully prevent the problems altogether. Less is more and flushing is your friend. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Thank you for your question. Any additional questions? The comments are there for a reason. I welcome the dialogue. Let's keep it going. Have yourselves a beautiful day on one condition that you stay safe because I want to see you in the next video. <laughs> Take care. Bye.